Welcome grade 12s, you are with Ashraf Patel and today's focus is on analysis and interpretation of financial statements with specific reference to the financial indicators. I can almost see the reaction on some of your faces. Why? Because this one or this section tends to be challenging compared to some other sections. but don't fear when Ashraf is near. That's right. So what are we saying? What is it that you need to know? Firstly, what's the purpose of your financial indicators? It is important for a business to measure its performance. Yes. Why? If you look at the, the following reason, a business has to assess whether they have been successful or not, and to determine the areas in which they can improve. The operative word is improve, guys. What are the questions that we need to answer? One, how profitable is the business? Okay. Two, how well does the business control its expenses? Obviously, if a business controls his expenses by minimizing your expenses you are maximizing your profits so keep that in mind should the owner be satisfied with the profit that has been earned taking into account the amount that was invested in the business very often you would think that a return of 10,000 Rand is good or great but take all the factors into consideration and then make a judgment based on the information that you have available. Is the business in a position to pay off all its debts? Important. Why? Because if a business cannot pay off all its debts, then you would find that that business should or would face problems in terms of liquidity problems, in terms of solvency problems, Watch the terminology that I'm beginning to use. I didn't start off with that for a specific reason, to give you an overview, and we will then go into the specifics. And you can then be able to see the relevance of the financial indicators. Okay, then we have, can the business pay off its debts without any problems in the short term? Clearly, you can see there's a difference between paying off all its debts and the paying off of debts in the short term? Did the business handle its working capital effectively? Are there areas of improvement? Is there something that they can do better? Okay, so we have to take all of these into consideration. Now, before we do that, I want you for the next two minutes to list the, the key concepts that you would like me to explain, right? With regards to financial indicators. Just write down important things or just from memory what you think is important when it comes to the discussion on financial indicators. Go for it.
Welcome back, grade 12s. Let us see what are the concepts or the key concepts that you may have written down. The aim of analyzing and interpreting your financial statements is in order to determine the following. Now watch. We're now using the terminology that you are expected to know. Number one, profitability. One, how profitable is the business? Two, how well does it control its expenses? Talk about the operating efficiency of a business. With regards to this one here, you would look at the percentage of your expenses as a percentage of profits. You would compare from one year to the next year. You would then also look at competitors in the same industry and how do their figures, how do their indicators compare with yours? Then we go on to return. With regards to return, are the owners earning a good return on their capital that they've invested in the business? Now, obviously, obviously, what, what will the owners look at? Whenever you are looking at return, one would always compare this to alternate investments. Why should you be satisfied with a return of 10%? Having gone through whatever you have gone through during the financial year, Whereas, you could have got an alternate investment and got a return of 18%. Surely, the alternate investment would have been a more viable option for you. So therefore, when you are looking at your return, you want to know what return is the owner or are the owners or the shareholders getting on their investment within the enterprise. When it comes to solvency, it is whether the enterprise can settle all of its debts. In other words, can this, is this business sustainable? And obviously, if the liabilities exceed the assets, then this means that the business is no longer solvent, but it has now become insolvent. Okay? So this means, therefore, that this particular indicator or indicators that fall within the category of solvency would look at the ability of a business to settle all its debts. The next one deals with liquidity. Now the emphasis changes to what? Is the business in a position to settle its short-term debts? In other words, its current liabilities without any problems in the short term. Remember that these current liabilities can only be paid for from current assets that can be converted to cash. On a lighter note, in one of the exams recently, a candidate was asked to comment about the liquidity of a company, and this candidate spoke about Sunlight Liquid and all other liquid agents. Liquidity, grade 12s, is the ability of the company to settle its short term debts. And yes, there are approximately seven liquidity ratios. I'm going to give you one minute to see if you can name them.
Welcome back, grade 12s. Let's see whether you have identified your liquidity ratios. One, the current ratio. Current assets is to current liabilities. The two, the asset test ratio, right? It's your current assets minus inventories is to current liabilities. Obviously, we're not going to discuss all of them. We're just going to mention them. We've mentioned the current ratio and the asset test ratio. Remember, your stock holding period, your turnover rate of stock, your debtor's collection period, your creditor's payment period, and your net current assets. All of those indicators would fall within the ambit of your liquidity ratios. Okay, now we go on to risk. What is the financial risk of the company? And to what extent is the business financed on borrowed funds? Now, remember, when dealing with risks, we're talking about the debt equity ratio, also known as the gearing ratio. The question that you have to answer is whether a company is highly geared or lowly geared. Remember? Highly geared means high risk. Lowly geared means low risk. Okay? When it comes to your return indicators, with specific reference to companies, pay special attention to the following. What are they? Number one, your return on total capital employed. Rotisser, as we know it. Right? Number two, your return on shareholders' equity, Roche, as we learn it, right? Then you have your earnings per share, an important indicator, one for comparison, one to compare with last year and this year to see what is your trend. Is there an increase? Is there a decrease? Look at the terminology that I'm using. This is what you are expected to use in the exams. Then your dividends per share, right? Compare it from two companies within the, same, within the same sector of the economy. Compare one company from last year to this year. Ask yourself the question, is there an increase in the dividends or what is the percentage increase in the dividends? These are the types of comments that you are expected to comment on when answering questions of this nature in the exams. Then we have the net asset value per share. Now, what is this all about? Your net asset value per share is what we call the intrinsic value of a share. In other words, the real value of a share. So the question then arises, what other values are there of shares? Yes, you have what is called the market value, right? Now obviously, that's the value of the share on OMO. OMO? Washing powder? Certainly not, guys. OMO, open market operations. That means what is the price of the share as it is trading on the securities exchange? What's, why the difference between the market value and the net asset value per share. Okay, and by means of concluding this, this segment of our lesson today, remember that the average price that we calculate, that is done for calculation purposes only. And that deals with the buyback of shares and like we have dealt with in previous lessons. Okay, guys, time to take a breather. Back in a while. See you soon. Welcome back, grade 12s. Yes, we're looking at a specific activity now. And in this activity, we are giving you 50,000 rand. And we are asking you to choose and focus on two companies in the same industry. The question or the activity says, when answering the question below, 
compare the information given and quote the relevant financial indicators of both companies, percentages, ratios, or amounts. What are you expected to do? The focus is one, compare and comment on the dividend payout policies of the two companies. Comment on the value of shares of the two companies. Right? Explain how this will influence your choice of company. Comment on the degree of risk and gearing. Explain how this will influence your choice of company. Right? And then obviously, you are asked to make a general comment on your choice of a particular company. Let's start with the first one. It says here, what information do we have? We are given the financial indicators of both the companies, as you can see, right? And based on these financial indicators, you are expected now to answer the question, compare and comment on the dividend payout policies of the two companies. Let's start off with Don Limited. What do we know? If we look at our dividends, we find that for Don Limited, we have an earnings per share of 420 cents. Immediately I tell myself, fine, if that is my dividends per share, let me write it down here, my dividends per share is 420 cents per share, right? And at the same time, I know that, let's find the slide, there we have it. What do we know? We know that this company has a dividend per share of 360 cents. So therefore, therefore, 3 160 cents that was my let me just check that one again I've got dividends per share there let's see our earnings per share was 420 and dividends was 360 fine so therefore we have this one would be our dividends per share and that one would be our earnings per share okay now that we've identified the two components that we are working with, we now need to draw a conclusion from this. This means that this company had an earnings per share of 420 cents. Okay, let's verify. There's it, earnings per share, 420 cents. Therefore, if I take my 360 cents, which was my earnings per share, over my dividends, let's do that again, sorry guys, 300, the dividends per share is 360 cents over my earnings per share of 420 cents. Okay, let's just clarify this so we understand it. Take your dividends per share, which is 360 cents, over your earnings per share, which is 420 cents, and express it as a percentage. Right? Let's do that. Let's take our calculators and say, fine, we've got 360 times 100 divided by 420. And this gives us a 85,7. Let's make it 86%. Okay, what does this mean? This means, therefore, the Don Limited are paying out 86% of their profits to their shareholders. Okay? 
So if they are paying out 86% of their share of their profits as share in the form of a dividend to their shareholders, surely they are keeping their shareholders happy. Right? Now, let's just compare this with Key Limited. And what do we find? Key Limited has a dividend per share of 490 cents. Okay? Let's put it down. We got a dividend per share of 490 cents and we have an earnings per share for key limited of earnings per share 980 cents okay therefore there we've got remember we're working with key limited now right okay so they have a dividends per share of 490 cents what does this mean this means that every shareholder that owned one share would get a total of 490 cents as the dividend for that share. Now, the earnings per share, what did each share earn of the net profit? That means if we were to take our net income and divide it by the number of shares that have been issued, we would get an earnings per share of 9 rand and 80 cents. Okay, so once again, what do we say? Take your dividends per share of 490 over your earnings per share of 980. Express this as a percentage. And what do we get? Let's do that. We got 490 times 100 divided by 980. And this will give us an answer of 50 what does this mean clearly you can see that key limited are only giving 50 percent of the profits in the form of of dividends to its shareholders let's go back to a key concept the profits of a company belong to whom the company that's right not to the shareholders the company is a legal person the company has its own rights, it has its own responsibilities. In terms, of the, in terms of the law, it is its own person, yes. So therefore, the company owns assets in its own name. Remember, these are important characteristics of a company. Therefore, the profits made by a company belong to the company. The company directors, who act as the eyes, the ears, the legs and the brain of a company will then declare the dividend to be shared out amongst the shareholders. So therefore, grade 12s, you can see in terms of a comparison now, clearly you can see that Don Limited paid out 86% to its shareholders, whereas Key Limited paid out 50% to its shareholders now you are expected to make some kind of judgment obviously you can see that and and this is where it is important for you to see that any irrelevant answer of yours that makes sense will get the marks as long as you can justify your answer if we look at don limited they are paying out a bigger percentage in terms of their dividends. 86% of their earnings are given as dividends, so they are keeping their shareholders happy, right? Whereas Key Limited are only paying out 50% in the form of dividends, and they are retaining 50%, okay? Obviously, the, the total amount would be the 100%, and this would de therefore give you a retention figure here of 14% and a retention figure here of 50%. Can you see that? This means that Key Limited are retaining more of their profits. Why do companies retain their profits? An important consideration, something that you need to take note of. Companies would retain their profits, one, for future growth and expansion, and two, for equalization of dividends over time. 
equalization of dividends? What's that about? Remember, if a company thinks or they forecast maybe a lean year, so what they do is they retain their profits so that they can have equal dividends over a period of time, equalization of dividends over a number of years. That's one of the reasons why companies retain their profits. Okay? So clearly you can see, important for you to understand, one, what do we mean by the dividend payout policy of companies? Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a possible solution in terms of what you can expect in the exams, right? Yes. Okay, guys, so what we need to see here is that when we are dealing with Don Limited, what did we see? There's my dividends per share, there's my earnings per share, or like I mentioned, 86% of the earnings. And if you look at Don Limited, what can we say? They are distributing a higher percentage of the income earned or key limited have decided to retain half of the EPS. Once again, look at key limited. What do we see? We see that 490 cents was my dividends. The EPS was 980. They distributed 50% of their earnings. And once again, they are keeping their shareholders happy by giving them good dividends. And here, yeah, this is what we mentioned as being very, very important. When it comes to the retention of dividends, we say that better long-term benefits, they're looking at the future, and also equalization of dividends over time. This is the point that I stress to you with regards to companies that are retaining their profits. So clearly you can see how important it is for you when you're laying out your solutions, when you are, when you are answering your qu a question of this nature, be clear and concise. Be clear and concise to the point. State what information you have. There's your dividends per share. There's your earnings per share. You can also state it as a percentage, like I've alluded to in our previous. Remember when we worked it out? The year we worked it out and we showed it as a percentage? There goes. That's where the, we got the 86% from. So, important considerations. Whenever you are answering a question of this nature, when you are doing a comparison, state the given information, use the given information to make a judgment call. Which company would you choose and why would you choose a specific company? Okay, important guys, make sure you understand that. But, time for a break. See you in a jiffy. Welcome back, grade 12s. Yes, we are busy with financial indicators. We are looking at a comparison between Don and and key limited. The question says specifically now, comment on the degree of risk. In other words, remember risk factor? Now, what I want to draw your attention to here is that the question is not indicating to you as to which financial indicator to comment on. All that the question says is, comment on the degree of risk and gearing. Can you see what, what I'm saying? So when you walk into an exam room, it is imperative that you now know your financial indicators, one, and two, you are also able to identify in which category of the financial indicators would they fall. So when the question says, talk about risk and gearing, then you know exactly which indicators, because remember, you have a host of indicators here. And if you're going to talk about the current ratio, 
when we're talking about risk and gearing, surely it is wrong. Why? Because current ratio falls within the, within the ambit of my liquidity ratios. So obviously, you need to know which are my liquidity ratios, which are my risk ratios, which are my gearing ratios, etc., etc. Please, grade 12s, an appeal to you, make sure that when you walk into that exam room, you have a clear indication of knowing your financial indicators and also determining which of these financial indicators would fall under which category. Okay, right. Coming back to my question. My question says, comment on the degree of risk and gearing and explain how this will influence your choice of the company. Right. Let's first go and identify which ones are we going to talk of. Number one, risk is the debt equity ratio. Okay. Now, look at, looking at Don and Key, Let's indicate this here. Don has an indicator of 0, 0,3 is to 1, meaning what? That if the company has an indicator of 0, 0,3 is to 1, surely this indicates to you that the company is lowly geared And when we talk about lowly geared, what are we talking about? We are talking about low risk. This means that if Don Limited has to apply for a loan, right, to a bank, to a finance institute, they are more likely to get the loan. Why? Because currently, for every one rand of their own equity, I'm going to put it in terms of rands now for you. They have outside or borrowed capital of 30 cents. So simply meaning that for every one rand of their own shareholders' equity, they are using 30 cents of borrowed funds. So clearly, this tells you that this is low risk. Right? And also, it indicates to you that they are not using as much foreign capital, borrowed capital, rather they are using their own capital. Next, when we talk about gearing in terms of the Rotisser, let's pick up that ratio first for Don Limited. Remember, currently we're only working with Don Limited. And that's where we're taking our information from for Don Limited. So, if we take the Rotisser for Don Limited, which is 15.6%, which is let's put it down on our answer sheet. So, immediately we're talking about the Rotisser being equal to 15, what was it? 15.6%. Okay, so we've got it as 15,6%. Now, what are you going to compare Rotisser to? A very, very important comparison. Watch this. You go to your financial indicators and other information, and you look for your interest rate on loans. Right? And you find that your interest rate on loans is standing at 11.5%. Immediately you tell yourself, fine, what am I going to do? Compare that to my interest rate on loans. And the interest rate on loans, as we have identified it, is 11.5%. So therefore, that's equal to 11.5%. Now, Draw a comparison between Rotisser, which is my return on total capital employed, as opposed to my interest rate on my loans. Watch, Rotisser, 
8.6%. And it is greater than my interest rate on loans, which is equal to 11.5%. What deductions can you draw from this here? This, where the rotisser is greater than your interest rate on the loans, we refer to that as positive gearing. Important terminology. Positive gearing. Positive gearing. That's it. Okay, what do we mean by that? What does this mean? Let's, let's simplify it so that you can understand what we mean by that. It basically means that the company is taking out loans at an interest rate of 11.5%. That's the interest rate that they are paying on that loan that they are using. At the same time, they are using that loan and generating a total return on equity of 15,6%. So clearly you can see that they are earning more from the enterprise in terms of what they are employing as capital within the enterprise as compared to the interest rate. And this, grade 12s, is what we refer to as positive gearing. When what happens? When your rotisser is greater than the interest rates. Right. Okay. Let's go to Key Limited now. And let's look at Key Limited. What are their indicators looking like? Firstly, let's identify the indicators. And maybe we can just use another color there. What do we have for the rotisser? We have 10,2%. Right. Immediately, we indicate that, that the rotisser is 10,2%. Okay? And the interest rate is 11,5%. So, 11 comma five percent is my interest rate on my loans right what conclusion can you draw from this i'm going to give you two minutes looking at this one here now of key limited look at their comparison with the rotisser and the interest rate on loans and you tell me now how would you comment on this indicator if it were to appear in your exam paper.
Welcome back, grade 12s. I'm sure you've drawn certain conclusions from the information that you have in front of you. Let's look at it. In this particular case, with regards to key limited, we find that the rotisser of 10.2% is less than the interest rate of 11.5%. See that? Is there a difference between Don Limited, what was greater, your rotisser was greater than your interest rate? What do we find now with Key Limited? We find that the interest rate is greater than the rotisser. Or, said other words, the rotisser is less than your interest rate. Meaning what? This means that the loan that you are taking, you are employing that loan, you are using it, you are generating a return of 10.2%, which is lower than the interest rate that you are paying on that loan. And this is what we refer to as negative gearing. Do you see that? When what happens? When your rotisser is less than your interest rate. Okay? This means that under certain conditions here, it would be better to pay off the loan rather than use the loan and pay a higher interest rate because we're only generating a return on total equity of 10.2%. Right. With regards to the debt equity of Key Limited. Let's see what it shows us there. You've got a debt equity ratio of 1,6 is to 1. Right? What does this mean? If I have a debt equity ratio of 1,6 is to 1, what is it telling me? It is telling me that 1, you are using more of borrowed capital, because remember, this one is borrowed capital or your non-current liabilities is to shareholders' equity. Right. While we're at it, let's clearly identify what makes up shareholders' equity. Shareholders' equity has two components to it. And the two components are ordinary share capital plus retained income. Yes, those two make up your shareholders' equity. At the same time, you're comparing it to and you're expressing it as a ratio. What is your foreign capital? What is your non-current liability? In this instance here, what does it mean? It means that for one rand of equity, our own funds, we are using one rand and 60 cents from our external funding in the form of non-current liabilities, right? This then tells you that this company is highly geared. Now, please, 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 I'm appealing to you. Do not confuse yourself with positive gearing and negative gearing, because that relates to, let's go back, when we're talking about positive gearing, we're talking about rotisser and the interest and loans. Remember that. When we're talking about being highly geared and lowly geared, what are we talking about? We're talking about the debt equity ratio. This means that this company has high risk Why, why high risk? Because they are using more external funding than internal funding. What do you think? If, if this company had to apply for a further loan from a finance house, and if you were the finance house, would you have forwarded the loan? Think about it. Certainly not. Why? Because already this company, for every one rent of its own equity, it owes 
to foreign land, uh, foreign uh, uh, finance houses a total of 160, meaning that this is a highly geared company and it has high risk. Keep this in mind. When you are talking about loans, when the question asks you about the, 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 the risk factor, when the company asks you whether you would take out more loans or wh whether you would sell more shares, these are the types of indicators that you have to use to justify your answer. Right. In concluding, remember, you also have to look at Obviously, other financial indicators of relevance. What would you talk about if you were asked to comment on? You can talk about the net asset value per share. Compare the two companies. You can talk about the market price of the shares. Obviously, you can see in terms of Key Limited, they have a much higher market price, although higher than Don Limited, but relative to the net asset value per share, it is lower. Look at Don Limited. Their net asset value is 3 and 10 cents, but the market price of that share is 400 cents. These are other factors that you could be asked to comment on when answering questions regarding analysis and interpretation of financial statements with specific reference to financial indicators. In conclusion, guys, make sure one, that you know your financial indicators. And number two, also know in which category those financial indicators would fall under the ambit of whether it's solvency, liquidity, risk, gearing, etc., etc., etc. Okay, guys, from the accounting team, that's myself, Ashraf Patel, James, and Avi, we wish you an accounting filled weekend. Until we meet again, keep your feet on the ground, reach for the stars, and be an accounting shining star. Goodbye.